Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. I noticed that we went past 80,000 subscribers, which is incredibly humbling given that this channel was originally started with the idea of it just being a personal log. So I think it's only fitting that in this vlog I tell you exactly how it was started. As with all such stories, this one begins a long, long time ago. Long before the age of next-gen AVs, Windows Defenders and GDPR policies. It was a time when 2 gigs of RAM was considered more than you'd ever need, and people still carried around USB sticks. I was in high school, and as any functional kid, I enjoyed playing video games. And that was back when we had good video games. Oh, I miss those days. If you've ever played the original Counter-Strike, NFS, Hot Pursuit, or Pocket Tanks, you know what I'm talking about. We didn't have loot boxes and microtransactions, but we also didn't have digital downloads which meant in order to play a game you actually needed a physical copy. So you either needed a disk, or you needed the files on your computer with an executable that you could run in order to launch the game. It was an era where files intrinsically were valuable, not only if they're your personal documents, but even if they were programs, because if you lost them you couldn't just easily replace them with something else, or you couldn't just go to the website and get them back. And one of my most prized possessions at the time was my collection of games. My ultimate source of life and meaning after the draining 8 hours of school. So you can imagine the horror and frustration when I was hit by Win32 Sality. For those of you that don't know traditional computer viruses, they can still be quite destructive, but their power was especially terrifying, where programs were essentially the holy grail of your computer and you couldn't do anything without them. And the worst part was, once you got something like Sality on your system, the moment you launched one of the infected applications, it would slowly start to infect every executable on your entire computer. And if you actually used an AV program to clean it, it only made things worse because the AV would just find all the files and delete them or quarantine them. Which for me meant I didn't get to play my games anymore. And back then I wasn't even smart enough to do any of this myself. So if I had a really bad virus infection, I would just have to call the technicians who installed my computer. They would show up and either they would try to clean the infection, which just meant using something like McAfee, which obviously worked great, or formatting the hard drive and installing Windows XP all over again, which is a lot of fun. If you've never done it, imagine looking at a blue screen for 30 minutes. You couldn't use your mouse in the installation window. There was no visual indication of data on your drive that you could select and delete or format. It was all going through single color menus using keyboard strokes. Naturally, I was not very fond of that experience. Now funnily enough, in some of my recent videos I've actually come across new variants of Sality, so maybe future Leo is gonna do a quick video demonstration for you just to show you what Sality does and what it's like. The nice thing about viruses or malware in general back then was that it was quite creative as in how it ruined your life. So sometimes they would pop up random error messages that you had to keep clicking on. A common one was associated with rundll.exe. Sometimes they would just slow down your computer to a crawl to where you couldn't do anything. Sometimes it would make things like your taskbar not work. And obviously once you got a couple of viruses or trojans on your system they would continuously connect to the internet, try to download more malware so that they can all have a nice barbecue party on your computer, the barbecue being your RAM and your CPU, and when they got tired of that your computer would just blue screen or die and not start. That was the end game essentially. At some point you would be staring at that Windows XP loading screen and either it would just freeze or it would just keep scrolling endlessly as your hope dwindled into nothing. One of the amazing things about the technicians that actually came to fix my computer was that some of the software they installed itself would actually be infected with malware. So it was only a matter of time before I'd have to call them again as the malware would take root and spread its wings. At one point I got sick of it and I decided I was going to figure out how to solve this myself. And you have to imagine at that time as a kid, to me fighting malware was like fighting dragons. It wasn't just about malicious instructions on your computer, it was an active battle against an agent which seemed to have free will and control and strategy. I think I remember one of the first programs I downloaded, it was AVG or Antivirus Grisoft. And of course it didn't do me a lot of favors. 
I kind of liked the interface. The updates were nice and small, which was convenient given I had a data cap of, what, one gigabyte? I remember cycling through a ton of AVs before I finally found one that was up to the challenge. At the time, it was Kaspersky. So when most AV programs, including Bitdefender at the time, would simply delete anything that they detected or quarantine it, which was a no-win for me because my games would be gone, I have so many painful memories of running an AV program doing a full system scan, seeing 200 infections, and then having that paradoxical choice of do I want to clean the system or not? Because if I would clean the system, I would lose access to my games instantly. Whereas if I didn't do it, at least I could keep playing until I blue screened. As far as I was concerned, it was a lose-lose situation. But with Kaspersky, it would actually take a long time to scan. It was very heavy on the resources, but once it detected viruses in the thorough scan, it would give you an option to disinfect. And that would again kind of lock down your system, take an hour and go through all the files, but it would successfully be able to recover your executables and delete the malicious code. Now I know as a malware analyst, it's all very simple and easy to understand, but as a kid, I was staring at that screen and that progress bar like there was a real battle going on there. And I would scan my system every day, hoping to find some malware that I could destroy just for the joy of it. Eventually, I got to a point where I thought, what's the best AV out there? And how would you know if it's the best AV out there? In my experience, I'd come across a lot that didn't work as well, so I really had the desire to find out. That was also kind of the time where I was starting to get into YouTube, not as a content creator, but just as a viewer. I really enjoyed watching video demonstrations of people doing things on their computer, and somewhere around the time I came across ways of collecting malware online so that I could actually test my AV. So I would download a malware folder, install an AV, scan it, and note down how many files it detected there. Obviously, I didn't know anything about virtual machines or snapshots or anything like that, so I was doing all of this on my host machine. I couldn't obviously run the malware, but I could just scan the folder and see how many it detected and use that as the detection ratio. And I had this nice little diary where I would just write the product name, write the date, and write the detection ratio. And that's when I came across this YouTube channel called LandGuy99. It's kind of sad that he doesn't do videos anymore, but that was really the very first time I saw somebody use something like a VM to install an AV product and try to test it. And the moment I saw that, I was like, this is really cool. If I could do that, I wouldn't have to maintain the diary and it would be so much fun to be able to do something like that. And at the time, I had no idea how you would go about doing something like that. My original idea was to use a camera to record the screen but I could never figure out how you would mount the camera and how his videos look so perfect because when I pointed my camera at the screen, it looked like complete garbage. Eventually, I came across the software called Camtasia, which would actually allow you to record your screen. I managed to purchase a license eventually, and that's when I got into AV testing. Over the years, I've completely changed how I do my videos. I've learned malware analysis, and then I ended up working for an AV company. But honestly, that's all a story for another day. So just like pretty much everyone in the AV community, I got into it because I was affected myself. It seemed like an exciting problem at the time, and I conceptualized it as a challenge that was fun and interesting for me to solve. Of course, a lot of things have changed since then. We have things like ransomware, phishing attacks, social engineering, and the idea of getting infected because you used a USB stick from a friend to transfer games. It seems something out of a fairy tale. But well, I hope you found the story entertaining, if not insightful. Once again, thank you so much for watching not just this video, but the PC Security channel in general. I never expected it to come this far, and now that it has, I'm really looking forward to delivering more value to the security community, developing methods that will help both users and companies, and I'm really looking forward to all of that. So thank you very much. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. This is Leo, and as always, Stay informed, stay secure.